What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell with the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio all the way from Australia. An amazing biohacker by the name of Lucas Allen. If I, if I said your last name wrong, Bru, I apologize, man. How are you, Lucas? I'm doing well, thanks, Jay. Really, really uh, humbled to be here. Oh, man, you're not humble. You don't need to be humble, man. You're amazing in and of yourself. I mean, I know, uh, like I told you, well, a lot of people have been told me to get you on my podcast and you know, I've checked you out on Instagram and I know you're very, very advanced and very cutting edge. So it's an honor. So you guys, so Lucas's uh, background is he really is one of Australia's leading biohackers without question, a nootropic expert. He has a background in exercise science and he also played professional soccer, which that's awesome. That was my best sport before I got Osgood Slaughters when I was a freshman in high school. He has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to optimizing hormones neurotransmitters, research chemicals, nootropics, and athletic performance. So dude, it's amazing to have you on here today. Again, appreciate you getting up. I know it's early over in um, Australia right now. How did the amazing Lucas Allen get on the Jay Campbell podcast? Yeah, well, it actually started about probably two years back. I think I reached out to you um, just to sort of mention the Facebook group that I created um, back in the day. It was called- Bro, it was uh, actually three years ago. Three it, was, years. it was 2017 because it was when I was doing the podcast with Josh Smith and Jim Brown. I Jeez. remember that now. It was the Get Serious stuff, and you were you were in that group. That was awesome. Yeah, so it's amazing how fast time flies, bro. Yeah, yeah. So back then, I mean, I just set up that Facebook group dedicated yeah. to the whole icing of the, the gonads. Yeah. Um, it was like a means of enhancing fertility. So Sure, sure. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, do you, um, are, do you, are you married? Do you have children? Uh, no, I'm, st I'm still uh, obviously single. Yeah, yeah. Just spent, yeah. he's like, I, no, bro, I spent time researching, right? Uh, <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. Well, well, I appreciate, again, for you being on the show today. I know you have a lot of awesome stuff to talk about. Uh, and we can go any direction. Just let's just, you know, right now for the purposes of just like getting really deep in what you're awesome about, let's talk a little bit about nootropics. Yeah, sure, man. So um, I've always been interested in nootropics and sort of, I've always been like uh, investigating research chemicals and um, experimenting. Cause it's one thing to like, obviously read something on paper, like in a, in a PubMed study can say whatever it wants, but if, unless you actually tried and experiment with it, you'll never know sort of um, how it's going to affect you. So I just sort of delved straight into it um, and just started experimenting and then tracking my cognition over time and, you know, seeing how it was affecting me like socially, um, seeing how it was making me feel like um, whilst I was studying at uni um, and then sort of just landed on um, a few key particular nootropics that I just sort of fell in love with. And then, man, since, uh, since then, like I've just been using them to my advantage and they've really like catapulted me into like a, 
into an insane productive state that I actually, I feel, I feel trapped in. I actually actually feel trapped in this GSD get shit done mode. That's Um, awesome. (laughs) So, uh, I guess, I guess nootropics for me, they've been, um, you know, very, very powerful in that regard. Um, and I've seen them work both really poorly and also really well, um, depending on the constituents and obviously the quality of the product and, um, and also the dosages. So I see, I see a lot of people making many mistakes um, when it comes to nootropics. And I think probably the, the, the biggest one would be um, that people just the, the, the principle of all, uh, if a little is good, more must be better. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's why it's funny that you say that because true story, never shared this before, but um, on any of my podcasts, but a long time ago when I was just an obscure somebody on the internet, right. With a handle in a, in a use net group, I'm almost 50. Tim Ferriss came into one of the groups that I was in and this was where Tim Ferriss was not famous. And he was just a guy who wrote the four hour work week. So he was kind of like a, you know, entrepreneur hacker or whatever the fuck you want to call him back then. And he came into our group and he was like asking the smart guys, which I happen to be one of the resident guys about, you know, training and all this. And he started telling us about the four hour body. Right. And so anyway, I'm writing this book and, you know, can I get help from you guys? And what I'll do is I can't pay you in money, but I'll pay you in books. And so true story, Tim Ferriss sent me like 50 books in 2009 or 2010 for Christmas. This giant box came to my house. I was living in Las Vegas in a suburb. I just remember, I was like, my wife was like, what the hell is that? (laughs) And it was his, his 50 of his books, right? So he was true to his word. So props to Tim Ferriss. But that's, you know, that's where that came from. You know, the minimum effective dose, which as you know, the MED principle, I've been using that in my life, you know, ever since then, really, which is like 2006, 2007. And bro, it does work. It, it absolutely applies to everything. You know, some great physicians that I've worked with have also said the same thing. They say, look, you should start low and go slow. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason ever to saturate receptors until you actually understand what they may or may not be doing. And you're right, bro, especially in the United States and, and, and with the internet, you know, the whole um, bro science, if it, like you said, you know, if some, if a little works, then more must be better. It's just so prevalent, especially yeah. on the internet <laughs> in almost regards to everything. And it's just sad, dude, because I've seen people literally use peptides, use research chemicals and completely destroy their receptors. And to the yeah. point where they literally now get zero benefit. I mean, we could talk about that to go deeper, but it's a really good point of what you're saying that it's so critically important that when you start down this path and you're just beginning walking this path that you only use the MED, the minimum effective dose. So I'm glad you brought that up. Exactly, man. A good example of that is with the um, aromatase inhibitors that you're, you're always stressing about. You know, dudes just absolutely smashing their estrogen to the ground and feeling like shit. Um, yeah, and then- yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. I mean, hundred. I mean, hundred percent. I mean, everything. I mean, I want to let you to talk about nootropics, and I didn't want to interrupt you, but it was such a really good point. I really wanted to accentuate that because I really, again, I know that's not why you're on here. I mean, I, I rarely get people to talk about that, but that's so important, especially yeah. as we get deeper and evolve over the next five to ten years, and maybe even longer. You know, when we really start dialing in peptides, and yeah. that, and as, you know, again, research chemicals and, and, and small molecules and other things. Um, that a lot of people have no experience with. I mean, you do, I do, but it's just, it's very important. And then you already said it, right? Like, you know, this is one of the things we're doing in our book right now too, but we're really dumbing it down, Lucas, because the average person literally can't even know how to reconstitute a lifealized powder, right? Like they don't know the difference between one milligram, one microgram, you know, a, a half a cc of bacterial static water. I mean, honestly, I mean, you know, this is stupid to me and you, but like the average person has no clue and there really is no help found online other than again, the bro boards, which are so full of disinformation, misinformation, <laughs> you know? So it's like, how does a person, especially a young person, you know, how do they really find quantifiable and quality sources online? It's not easy, bro. Mm. Yeah, it is. It's a challenge. Um, and, and it's good that you're, you know, pioneering that we need, we need people like yourself and Ben Greenfield and other experimenters to go ahead and, um, you know, cut through all the, the BS and provide quality, quality info. Cause that's, that's what we're about. You're doing the same thing, man. I, I mean, I humbly appreciate that and I received that, but, uh, you know, you're doing the same thing, dude. I mean, I, we're kind of all out there on the bleeding edge, you know, experimenting with these things. And then, you know, obviously, 
re researching and then revealing, you know, what we find, but it's just, it's unfortunate because there really are a lot of guys that are overdoing it. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of, speaking of like you said, like revealing what we found, that's something that's always been really true to me. Um, and there's something that's like one of my real core values is to, if I've found something, for example, let's say I've just recently come across a really cool PubMed article on a very popular um, supplement, let's say curcumin or, or, sure. or CDP choline or whatever. I always, I feel obliged to share it, man. Like it just, it's like if I've just found something golden, my innate desire and like value system is like share, share it. Like if you don't share it, it's if you withhold that critical information, you are doing the world a disservice. And totally. that is like legitimately what I'm all about, man. That's what I, I wake up every day. The first, the first set of notifications I look at is my PubMed notifications. Like right. that's what I do. Like, and I just dive deep and then just, I'm thinking, right, how can I, how can I syndicate this content? How can I distribute it in a way that makes sense to people? And really, I just want, I want legacy, man. I want, yeah. I want to be known for that, that dude who, who discovered something profound um, and that, that's my burning desire. That, that is my, that is that thing that I wake up with every single day. And it's, it's like a sense of sort of discovery and like a sense of like, I know I'm here to discover something that's going to benefit millions of people. And I don't know whether that's going to be a nootropic, a peptide, a, a um, constituent from a herb like theanine or whatever it is. But man, that's, that's like, that's my calling. And that's what really just motivates the hell out of me, man. That's awesome, man. I mean, obviously I'm the same way, you know, I always say like, you know, I have my mission, my core mission statement in the morning is like, you know, how can I serve millions of people, you know, and that's literally what I want to do. And, you know, however that, that may or may not happen. I mean, I, you know, I put that in the spirit of, you know, the almighty, you know, and I say, just, you know, guide me and allow me to serve as many people in the best way possible. But that's awesome, dude. I mean, you know, that's your why. I mean, you know, your, your why is like, you know, how can I discover something that can benefit the greatest number of people, yeah. in the most efficient, you know, seamless way. And obviously the internet is a perfect idea or, or example of this. Cause I mean, bro, you're the other side of the world, right. Talking to me right now through this, right. Like there's a lot of negative connotations that come from this, you know, we call it toxic tech, blue light, you know, all yeah. the contamination, EMF, you know, stuff, but there's also a great benefit that, you know, you and I can connect and we can share information, you know, and values obviously, you know, around our mission and our purpose. So that's so cool. Um, that we're talking about that, you know, so you, you already stole it from me. I was, was going to say, cause that was one of your bullet points was like the, to ask you, what is your burning desire and flame that you wake up with? So again, it's your, your mission is just like my mission is to serve as many people yeah. as possible with like the most cutting edge information in a way that's going to, you know, critically truly help because, yeah. you know, you know, and I know, I mean, you've been following me for a long time and now I'm obviously following you is that, you know, the system the allopathic medicine model, the sick care system, as I call it, is, is completely broken. You know, it's actually already imploded. It just doesn't know it yet. You know, COVID was actually the last bastion. The last remaining anchor has now been decimated by COVID because now people are literally so fearful of even going into an allopathic medicine facility that it's actually created a much bigger opportunity for people like me and you now because now they're looking to you know, optimizers, people that are, you know, clued in, done the research, you know, written books, published work, you know, have good, you know, big followings online for real information. Cause bro, they're not even going to go to their doctor's office. They're too afraid. Right. Yeah. 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 It's crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> so, so let's talk a little bit about neurotransmitters too. So, yeah. you know, your thoughts on, um, well, first off, before we go there, like what are your favorite nootropics? Oh, for me, oh, well, so I am someone who responds really well to dopamine, dopaminergic based nootropics. So um, over the years, I've derived a lot of benefit from um, uridine monophosphate, which is uh, basically what CDP choline gets broken down into. Yep. Um, and for me, that, that chemical has induced a state of insane productivity where... Um, and I can talk about the mechanisms if you want to dive deep into. Yeah, like no, for sure. Like, what is your dosage? I mean, I, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Um, that was in a supplement that I used to take a long time ago. Yeah. But for me, and again, I'm not going to drown you out. Whenever I go down the path of dopamine or just talking about um, 
nootropics, I don't give a shit about anything until something beats modafinil, right? Like I can use a microdose of modafinil and, you know, I don't even have to really come on or off of it. Um, and I'm sure you understand the mechanism of action, you know, to the level that we understand the mechanism of action of modafinil because it's like an alien drug. We really don't understand it. But I mean, I, as long as I take a very micro dose, yeah. mind blowing, right? And I do come off because I just know I don't want to oversaturate anything. But I really think, Lucas, if I just took a 25 milligram dose of modafinil every single day of my life that I needed to be focused, it would always work. It's like... It's just you know, there's no come down for me. There's no crash. There's no receptor attenuation. It works. Now, obviously, and you know this, like everybody else, it doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. There are people out there. I know Chinese people, especially. And again, I'm not calling them out. It's just I know a lot of people who are Chinese descent who literally get nothing from modafinil. Like I have this girl that I used to consult with who's a very successful entrepreneur, CEO type, travels the world. Bro. She's this tiny little Chinese girl. And I gave her like a whole fucking 200 milligram modafinil pill one time. And I was scared she was going to be awake for four days. And she's like, I don't even feel it. What? Yeah. No. So, you know, so I was like, what? I mean, this was like six years ago. And I was like, and I had just started experimenting with modafinil. And I thought taking a half a tab was excessive. And she was like, no, no, give me a whole one. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Jeez. So then, I mean, I started researching about it and Googling it, you know, Googling it like that's real. But I mean, I, I started doing research and there were a lot of people who are non-responders. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's just the, again, the beauty of the gene pool is that there are literally people out there that respond to nothing. So anyway, back to the one that you're talking about, which I'm gonna let you go deep on. Um, I did use that in a natural supplement, which I can't even remember, dude. Yeah. But it was a natural supplement that was sold in the back of Iron Man magazine, <laughs> like back in like the late, late nineties. I want to say it was the yeah. late nineties, early two thousands before I even started to testosterone. And I, it definitely worked. Uh, but again, to me, the gold standard is um, modafinil. And until somebody can give me something that's better than modafinil, I mean, Adderall is, you know, a drug and it's speed and all that stuff, but that shit is poison. You know, obviously it, yeah. it causes massive, um, desensitization and also issues you know you can come off and stuff like that again it's speed but i just you know i mean i want you to talk about it but i just like i always say whenever it comes into nootropics i just instantly say like this is the gold standard modafinil and if you can come up with something better than me i'm all yours and i'll sell it and promote it but i just haven't well, dude dude you definitely need to keep a lookout for um uh, uh dubby sands i literally just posted about it about three weeks ago um and it's got a very similar profile to modafinil but in the research studies, it's actually been shown to have like smoother, um, less anxiety inducing energy and wakefulness promoting effects and actually shares a lot of the similar, a lot of the same mechanisms as modafinil. So like via boosting histamine. Nice. Um, yeah. That one there, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about it after our show. Like if you No, please. Yeah. And that's, and just send me a link w about yeah. that study or whatever. Um, Cause yeah, I'm, cool. I'm, I'm, things like that, you know, Ryan Smith and I from Taylor Maid are always talking about. So that'd be awesome. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. For sure, man. But um, back to, back to my uh, urine. So yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it sort of surprises me because, you know, I see it overdosed again, it comes back to dose, man. So yeah, like, this is one of those compounds that has like a, a weird dose response curve where like, um, actually at lower doses, it's more stimulating, whereas higher doses, it's actually sedating. And in the research studies they actually used like 400 to 600 milligrams human equivalent dose um, to actually facilitate deep sleep. Wow. So you've got a compound that you can literally use for sleep two... and for, for, for ergogenesis for the brain. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, so that was, I mean, that was one compound. And then I've, you know, I've delved into a lot of, um, a lot of the other like research chemicals as well, like one in particular uh, from Russia, um, which is quite well known. Um, it's, you know, used heavily by their military, like the Soviet military. And what is this? Uh, this one's bromantane. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, that one's quite potent for in increasing wakefulness and motivation. Mood. Yep. Yep. Um, I had one of the best workouts of my life. What is your dosage life. using that? So I respond well to 25 milligrams orally. Um, first, anything, thing in the, first thing in the morning? Oh, yeah, because the onset's like four to six hours later. Yeah. Um, and it's got a very long, it's got like a, an 11-hour half-life as well. Yeah. So, 
Lyle McDonald, are you familiar with Lyle McDonald, the crazy Lyle McDonald? Do you know who he is? No. Okay, so so again, dude, you're so young. How old are you, by the way? Twenty-four. Fuck, dude, you're a child. So, so Lyle, I'm fifty almost. I'll be fifty. So Lyle and I used to be research um, compadres before he went fucking completely insane. And he knows he's insane. He's like, uh, he's bipolar. He's nuts. But we used to do research together at the same time that you, like, literally when you were your, I was your age. And this is before the internet. I mean, it was like we had miscellaneous fitness weight. We had alternate news sites. It was like green screen code to even do internet stuff. But anyway, he did a lot of research on that like a long time ago. So it's kind of funny that you're talking about that right now because he used to rave about that too. Um, like I said, does okay for me. Um, but um, – probably what I need to do is probably like sit down from you or have you like send out an email of like, Jay, this is what I use. This is my dose. Yeah. And then we can kind of like uh, correspond with each other. And I can tell you like my thoughts or stuff like that. Cause I'm sure you're using a lot of shit that I have no clue about. Uh, but it's funny that you'd mention that because I'm yeah. like, oh, that's not even fucking new. Right. Yeah. But, but, but you're right. Like there's a lot of research. Are you familiar with bioregulators? Like you talked about Russia. Do you know about bioregulators? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because Nick, Nick is all over bioregulators. You know, we just had a call with Dr. Heather Smith Fernandez two days ago, and he was like telling her, he's like, look, they're fucking better than peptides. It's just they're shut off in the West because the, the, the Russian guy that's got the patent on them locks the West out, right? So there's only one company that sells them to the West, and that's uh, anti-aging systems. Are you familiar with that company? Yeah. Yeah, I think I've seen them, yeah. Yeah, yeah so they sell them to the West. But like Nick's just raves about bioregulators because – Bro, they have stuff that like will absolutely regenerate broken, you know, heart tissue that like COVID attacks. So there's a lot of stuff that they have that, you know, is that, you know, again, it's natural. It's like ancestral stuff. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. And, and so it, it just, it's, again, it's all patents, you know, big pharma and all the bullshit. And so this guy blocked all that shit from being in the West. So the West overlooks the bioregulators, <laughs> but Nick is just like, dude, you have no idea. You know, he's constantly telling me that I'm like, okay, we'll get them into the country, bro. I mean, we got, cause I mean, right now, dude, I don't know what it's like for you guys in Australia, but I mean, ever since COVID now shit's broken. Like if I try to order something internationally from anti-aging systems to get it to my house, there's no guarantee I'm going to get it. Literally no guarantee. I mean, are you guys having problems getting shipments from like the States into Australia? Oh yeah, man. It takes like at least six to eight weeks just to get in. Holy and then, you, know, you run the risk of customs as well. So Bro, it's, that's insane. Well, yeah. I mean, of course there's always that, but wow. Nightmare. Yeah, dude. Shit is so broken, dude. That's crazy. Well, anyway, go back to um, your nootropic stuff. Yeah. So bromantane was one. Um, and then another one that's quite powerful is um, nine methyl beta carbolene. So it's like a, it is a very new sort of research chemical. That's uh, which, that's methylene blue. That's the one the doc the docs are using, right? Is that what that that that's the uh, one? It's not methylene blue. It's um nine methyl beta carbolene. So it's a little oh. bit different. Um, I think Ryan Smith he, he's probably familiar with it. Um, all right, you yeah. definitely got to send me about that because I'm not familiar with them. But I know that doctor. I can't think of the doc's name right now. But they use the methylene blue. Is it a derivative? Oh, okay. Um, no, this is actually a harmaline derivative. Ah. Like from the you know ayahuasca um so it's oh, actually shit, you definitely got to get me this bro yeah i need to sort of pique your interest yeah no um, i'm definitely that's dope so how did you find out about this one well i've kept my eye out on this for a couple of years but the original studies you know they were conducting on it was purely based around parkinson's so wow. like they were analyzing its effects on reversing dopaminergic damage um restoring um, nerve growth factor, BDNF, GDNF, no go. So was Taylor right now then or no? What was that? Sorry. Is Taylor made selling that right now or no? Taylor made are not selling it. No. Okay. So where do you get it? You're just getting it from a research chemical company right now. So I'm just using science.bio. Um, science.bio. So yeah. I knew that I knew having you on here, you're going to give me all sorts of shit. that I know nothing. Yeah. They're from the States as well. So, um, pretty sure you have to pay you all right bro you're gonna you're gonna have to send me the show notes because half the show i have no idea what you're talking about but i know my interest is so peaked so that's awesome man so what would you so how do you compare this then to uh bromeline i mean is it the same better i mean like is it one a one b for you oh um they do share similar effects but i would say that um this is more psychoactive and more like mentally refreshing and awakening 
Um, whereas, but do you feel like, do you feel like a raised vibration, like a higher consciousness one on it when you just feel like you're more connected to everything? Oh, mm, not so much. Nothing like any like psychedelics where you okay. connect more with your inner yeah. self. Yeah. Uh, that's a diff. Yeah. I know. I know what feeling you're talking about. That's like, the, uh, yeah, for sure. But I mean, you know, you mentioned a little bit of plant medicine as an alkaloid or a derivative. So I figured maybe there's some of that, but that's cool. So this is just pure focus, correct? Yeah. Focus, anti ADHD and um, motivation. Also, how, restore, how long does it last? Between six to eight hours. But the other wow. thing is you can use it sort of like you can, what I'm thinking is like, <laughs> I actually made a day called nine MBC Sundays as like a, as like a resetter. So like you use it sporadically, like maybe on Sundays and Wednesdays twice a week to resensitize yourself to caffeine and other stimulants. Cause it, it helps to restore sure. the activity. Sure. So it's like, you know, that's again, dosage protocol matters. Um, how you use the compound matters. What you use it with is dangerous as well. So there's some studies showing that if you combine it with methyl donors, you know, like methylfolate or right. other methyl, anything that activates, methylation can actually it can turn the compound into a neurotoxic chemical so that's, yeah. hey, not the kind hey. of shit you want laying around your house bro definitely not wow. that's awesome yeah so um yeah that's non mbc so we've spoken about bromantane uridine um and yeah obviously like the precursors you know you need your you need your precursors your cofactors and you would know like you know yeah, the co of the, course the, the b vitamins they're all they'll play a role man massive like dude massive i mean using metformin without using you know folate and b is just stupid so i'm telling you right now dude like you're killing me right now with all this amazing stuff so make sure you send me a recap because my my podcast team is not going to be smart enough to pick any of this so send me links the names because that's all they're going to do as soon as this goes live they're gonna be like where did you get that bro where did you get that you know that's what people want now it's like they don't want to yeah. learn about it they just want to use it yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, bro. It's like the article today, right? Like, bro, why would you write a 10,000 word article? Just give me the summary in 200 words. Guess you're not going to find out about it, dude. Yeah. yeah that's where people yeah. are. They're so intellectually lazy. Um, but that's epic, dude. All right. We'll go. I mean, is there any other nootrop nootropics that you want to talk about or? Oh, um, not, not really, man. Just again, like, three. they're the probably top three for me, like dopaminergic based compounds. Beautiful. Um, there are some experimental ones. Like I mentioned, the one that you need to get Ryan Smith to look into is Erdabi sounds. Um, that's, that's the modafinil like analog, okay. um, which appears to have really promising effects based on the initial trials. So, right. Well, make sure you send me that spelled out and where yeah. I can find it and stuff like that. Like I said, if you can send me links to, to where like these are either available via research or just some pub bed stuff about it. So yeah. I can, that'd be epic. I'm telling you now, man, like there's no one, there's literally no one manufacturing them. So you, right. like, right. just start, man. like if you can get them made, just do it, do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, that's the issue right now is right. It's like, they just got peptides themselves, which oh. you know, just got fucking you know, yeah. abolished, yeah. you know, from a pharmaceutical standpoint. So, I mean, now it's going to be just the wild, wild west, bro. I mean, let's face it. It's going to be research chemical company city, you know, and truthfully, I'll let I'll let you know, I'll say it now. I mean, by the time this show runs, it'll probably already be, in the public, but I mean, dude, I got no options right now. You know, I got thousands of people that follow me, you know, really more than that, that are like, where will we get peptides, bro? So it's like, I'm now vetting all the manufacturers of the, the research chemical companies. And I'm basically just going to end up picking one based on the shit that they send me. And I use myself and just be like, Hey man, I'm going to tell the guys the truth. Like, I don't give a shit what happens to you, but you need to expect to make as much money as you can for a couple of months. And then probably, close up shop and open up under something else right because like i don't know what kind of fallout's going to come from it other than you're going to sell a whole shitload of research chemicals so it's funny because like i'm honestly dude like i got docs hey bro uh, wh where can we go hey bro you know you know and i'm like dude you're a fucking doctor what are you going to do put your license on the line by you know furring your patients to go to research chemical company <laughs> but i mean they will i mean what else are they going to do yeah. yeah so it's like hey just i didn't send you do whatever you know, I just tell them, don't be stupid enough to send your patients to that place. Just say, Hey, Jay Campbell said, or somebody that's not going to get your ass in trouble where they show up, the FDA shows up at your office and says, uh, it shows on this bottle, not for human consumption. <laughs> yeah. Research purposes. Oh, it's just so stupid. All right. We'll talk about some neurotransmitters too. 
Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. I guess one I wanted to really focus on, and you've already spoken a lot about like serotonin, um, but I think one 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 key aspect of serotonin that a lot of people sort of don't understand is the fact that it can be very antagonistic to dopamine. Right. So um, a lot of guys think that you know, and even this is the other thing with a lot of supplements, um, you know, natural compounds, and on the bodybuilding forums and things sure. like that, they're just they're chucking in like all these adaptogens, you know, rhodiola and things right. like that. And whilst they do serve a purpose and they can be physically good, like for energy and things like that, a lot of them are actually very serotonergic. And and right. and I wrote an entire article, which you're going to have to share. It's, it's on ashwagandha. For sure. Um, now ashwagandha, although it is good for lowering cortisol and good for, um, you know, combating stress, it can be too potently serotonergic and can leave a, leave guys with similar symptoms to SSRIs. Right. Because it shares a similar mechanism as as SSRIs, which is right. a de desensitization of the the 5-HT1A receptor. So you get the same sort of negative effects of um, SSRIs. Lucas, there's nothing good from SSRIs. I mean, zero. I mean, I, I, I vilify those vehement, vehement, vehemently annihilate all physicians that prescribe them. I mean, as you know, it's the number one, you know, line of defense, first line of treatment for guys that come in with depression when it's really just a hormonal imbalance. I mean, it's just disgraceful what it does. I mean, you know, and that's another thing, you know, I'm glad you're talking about it because I don't really talk a lot about this, but the usage of SSRIs, and I don't even have to mention any names, but you know, restore all, I mean, there's, you know, there's so many bullshit ones now. Um, well, butrin. There's so many of them. There's so many like generics, but bro, yeah. probably the number one symptom of them is a suppression of free testosterone. Yeah. So essentially it literally makes men eunuchs who have no virility, have no desire, have no well being. Basically they're fucking sh shut off from the world. You know, it, 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 it's right. horrible, dude. They're demonic. No yeah. one should ever use them under any circumstances. And I know psychiatrists or people that work in the mental health profession will come at me and say, you know, you're not qualified to say that. And I'll say, fuck you. Because I am qualified to say that because I know what those drugs do. They do nothing good for anyone, especially long-term. And as you said, they create a feedback loop that you literally become dependent on them. Yeah. Try removing or withdrawing a person who's been on an SSRI, bro, for five years, especially in their young ages, right? Like these criminal doctors and psychiatrists that put 16 and 15 year old women on those drugs, they're done. They're never going to get off them without massive feedback loop issues. I mean, it's just, I mean, I've seen it in my own family, dude, you know, mm. socks, man. Yeah, it is, it is, it is an issue. Um, and obviously like there are repercussions and, and obviously like the changes that occur in the brain, following usage even after withdrawing is this there's still receptor desensitization yeah. so to actually undo the damage for a lot of people it's almost irreversible you know you i know it's it's sickening man like it's, it's it, it, it is irreversible i mean I, well that's what i was just going to ask you have you found any analogs that work on restoring you know natural pathway activity to you mean to sort of make up for the the dysfunction there are compounds out there for yeah. example one one that counteracts you're probably familiar with ciproheptadine yeah of course ciproheptadine's um it can be used to offset serotonin syndrome um and to at least restore the balance and reduce that serotonin dominant state because ultimately man like a serotonin dominant state is learned helplessness yeah exactly you're literally you're stuck in you literally you view the world as like 
you are stuck. You cannot, you cannot go out and produce. You know, you must obey and comply. Think and of follow. how many people, bro, are out there right now protesting around the world who are those people that you're mentioning. They literally are stuck in helplessness. Yeah. I mean, but that's, I mean, that's a good point. I know I haven't talked to anybody about this, but that's why so many young people out there, your age, that are out there fucking protesting have been on those drugs since 14 or 15 years old because mommy and daddy gave them to shut them up because they were like, you know, wanting attention and mommy and daddy didn't want to give them attention. I mean, it's disgusting what those drugs have done to people. It's great. They're, they're basically zombies, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, like, ultimately, like you said, it's, it's sad to see particular guys, you know, age of 18, 19 with low test, low testosterone, feeling like, and just wondering why they feel like shit. Their doctors run some labs, you know, they figured out, you know, their test is like what? 300, Less. Bro, they're lowering the standard mean deviation. I just was, you know, on a podcast last week with a guy and I said, now high with the lab corp and quest diagnostics is mo- down to 786 is high. 25 years ago, an average man was walking around on the streets with a thousand total testosterone and that was normal. Yeah. It's all a scam, bro. This is all, you know, it's all by design. Yeah. They just want us basically supplicated, emasculated. And as you said, go along, get along. Stuck in that level of just conformity. Mm. Yeah. And what was the, what was the, there was a thing that um, a few doctors and things were pioneering to reduce, to lower the testosterone to treat COVID. What was that? Oh yeah. The androgen receptor sensitivity and spike COVID too. And spike COVID SARS too. They said that if you would lower the person's testosterone output, that they would be more, yeah, dude, it's all insane. Wow. I did a, a podcast a interview with Dr. Rahm about that. I mean, you and I both know that that is such nonsense. I mean, the only protection physiologically that is afforded from any disease that is of dissonance, whether it's a bioweapon or not, or man made or naturally made occurring, and I think it's probably a combination of both, it's definitely at this point mutating as it goes around the world, um, is a low inflammation optimized lifestyle. It's yeah. that simple. I mean, all disease comes from systemic inflammation. I don't know why anyone doesn't understand this, you know, and obviously you talked about it. I mean, you know, if you got people on SSRIs, you're screwing with their serotonergic, serotonergic and dopaminergic signaling pathways, you're fucking up their synapses. Yeah. Like you said, you're creating this counterbalance where they're just, they're, there's, they're mongoloids. I mean, they're, they're basically just completely stuck, as you said, in a conformity, conformity, emotional sensitivity they cannot think for themselves it's unbelievable i mean that doesn't even talk about the shit that you and i could really go deep on about like destroying your body through shitty nutrition and you know manufactured food products and food stuffs which is what most people eat today bro yeah. yeah you know i mean i don't know how bad it is in you guys in australia i mean are, are, are your produce sections like is it the same thing where you have to get organic and wild caught or is stuff still not as contaminated as it is in the states because everything is contaminated in the states now oh look it's just, it's still an issue here as well man like we, we have to be very like really um careful with what we what we purchase because like obviously coals and wool like our main um supermarkets they do have an organic section so that's at least pretty good but um the rest of the produce is just crap man like yeah think- now, bro honestly i i tell people this all the time like i literally now cannot even eat most meat like, I mean, it, we're getting to the point now where like, if I don't know that it's grass fed and wild caught, I mean, I won't even look at it. I mean, I, t- dude, I'm so like dialed from an optimization standpoint now that I taste the chemical constituents. It's so disgusting. The pesticides, the fertilizers, you know, I could give you up more and more shit, but it's so obviously now in the runoff and bro, this is organic shit. <laughs> So, I mean, like the United States is so contaminated, yeah. right? Like you can still get grass fed, wild caught beef, uh, fish, but like most fish, you know, this it's contaminated. The Fukushima spill has contaminated the United, not the United States, but the, the global Pacific ocean. Salmon does not, anyone who's a connoisseur of salmon, I used to be a connoisseur of salmon. You, it tastes nasty. It has a chemical taste to it, no matter how you prep it. It has a chemical taste to it. And again, that's from Fukushima spewing out radioactive waste into the ocean. 
Yeah. It's insane. I mean, I mean, the only thing that I can actually still eat now that I don't taste it is like a grass fed ribeye or bison. Yeah. That's it. So, I mean, there's nothing that you can't not taste the chemicals again, even if they're wild caught grass fed, it, you know, what's coming out of the sky, bro. Yeah. You know, the, the acid rain and the byproducts from just, you know, deforestation and it's dude, it's nuts, dude. You know, you know, we, when I did the podcast with Anthony J, I mean, you know, he talks about this in his book, Astro Generation. I mean, it's like, dude, they're turning the fish female. Yeah. It's unreal, man. So, but I mean, bro, but let's be honest. And I don't talk about this with people. So let's talk about this. This is the same shit that's happening to women yeah. and men, right? Like my daughter, my bonus daughter, my wife's youngest biological who's I'm raising 18 dominant soccer player, high school, all American soccer player. Senior in high school, just had her blood work done. She's having really bad cramps, had a specialist work at her, and she said she's totally estrogen dominant. And so I got on the phone with her. We spoke yesterday. She's a you know, friend of mine, friend of the show. She has a big clinic in Northern California. She's friends with my wife too. And she said, Jay, remember when we talked on the podcast about this? This is what the environment is doing. It's chemically castrating women, chemically castrating men. The men are low testosterone, as you said, pussies no strength, no virility, no desire, owned by the video games, owned by social media, owned by porn. And the women are totally estrogen dominant. And that's what's so weird is like, you know, my daughter is a, is a super freak athletically, but she's still estrogen dominant. And that's just completely due to the environment. So, you know, what do you do? Well, you got to put her on progesterone. You got to change some things. I mean, but bro, that's where we are. You know, there's a reason that men cannot get pregnant right now. Men struggle to have children because sperm counts, as you know, are so low. Yeah. Fertility is the biggest issue right now, I think, in science. Like, they don't even know what to do. I mean, I mean, right now, like, if a man gets to 35 and doesn't have children, the likelihood that he's not going to be able to have kids is very, very great. Because again, it just, the, the species is changing. Yeah. You know, it, we're, we're like transmogrifying ourselves so that we don't have the ability to have kids. I mean, the Hebrew University study, which is in all my books, says that by 2040, XY chromosome will be extinct. It's fucking nuts. But again, nobody talks about it, dude. You know, I mean, you're, we're doing work, right? We're, but no one wants to talk about the truth. I mean, it's like, you got to optimize or else. <laughs> right? Yeah, I love it, man. That's that's oh, what I'm no, all about. I, mean, I, want you, I do want you to talk about natural ways to optimize because obviously I'm the pro testosterone yeah. guy. You know, I always say I'm the biggest. It's the biggest tool in the tool belt. But for 24 year old guys, no, you got to be natural. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not you're too early on the path to go down that path. Now, obviously, I I get arguments from guys that say, "Hey, dude, I'm fucked. I destroyed my body in my teenage years. You know, all my receptors are turned off. I'm fat. I'm obese. I'm inflamed. Blah, 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 you know." Even those guys can still naturally optimize through hard work. But, you know, some of the best doctors, they'll tell me, though, you got to be a type A. You got to be seriously anal retentive and you got to do a lot of work and you got to be really, really methodical and watching your stuff because, again, the environment is so contaminated. So, anyway, your thoughts on a 20, an 18 to a 30 year old man optimizing his testosterone? Yeah. Well, I would say, I mean, I was always, um, seeking out ways to boost test and i i mean i got my test done you know about five months ago and i naturally got mine to 988 so i'm very close to a thousand naturally um and that's through various supplements various herbs things like that but ultimately i think for guys in that age bracket man it's so important that they just get the fundamentals right like if they're not sleeping well if and if they're drinking alcohol if they're not meeting all their, um, like they're not achieving their sufficient nutrient status for all the nutrients, not just zinc, but like every other nutrient. Um, if they're in a caloric deficit or if they're eating like sh other really bad foods um, and if they're not squatting or deadlifting. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah I mean like. You got to squat. And even now you can't get into a gym. You just do free squats. My legs are fried right now from just doing like sets of 50 reps, free squats, you know, dude, yeah. by the way, it's so funny. You just said that it just triggered me. My wife and I just went to the beach for two days. It was a staycation. My daughters are with their, my ex. We don't have anybody, just me and her at work. And so we're like, fuck this. We're going to Ventura County beach. They're, they're, they're rebelling against the governor of California. Who's, you know, masks and 
shut down everything. And so we were on the beach. It was awesome. We didn't get attacked or anything, but like we ran on the beach, bro. Like I have, you know, there's no gyms. Everything's closed off. So it's like, you know, push-ups and running on the beach. But bro, I literally have not run in so long, you know, because I'm like low impact. Running is terrible. You know, I mean, obviously I'm older, but uh, we ran on the beach for two days. Like that was our cardio. And dude, my, my body's destroyed. Like I got to go see my chiropractor. I mean, like all oh, my spine is shifted and stuff like that. It's so funny you said that, but like you have to squat. You know, and again, and I'm against squatting at 50 because my chiropractor is like one of the top chiropractors in the world. And he talks about anatomical alignment and spinal shifting and disc compression, and synovial fluid. He's one of the smartest guys in the world. But as long as you squat productively relative to your age, now a 24 year old guy can put a load, can load up a barbell or load up a squat rack, whether it's a Smith machine, I don't give a shit, put chains on it, whatever. A 30, I mean, a 45 and older guy should not, but he can still squat because again, anatomically and functionally squatting is unbelievable for the lower quadrant, for the hips, for the trochanter, for the bone mineral density, all of those things. I'm really glad you say that because I don't really talk about that very much, but I have gotten back into squatting and I told people I will never squat another time again because again, I'm tall, I'm about 6'2", I'm pretty muscular. And it just started really breaking me down, bro, at like 44 and 45. And again, my chiro then was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Let me show you what's going on. Here's your discs. You've got compression. So I stopped. But now, you know, since COVID, I don't have any other way to train, right? Like if yeah. I want to activate my muscles in my legs, I got to do something. And so I've just been doing free squats, right? Like good form, slow you know, for reps of 50, like two or three sets until I'm like fatigued. And dude, those are amazing. So you are right about that. You will maximize and optimize endogenous hormone production by yeah. vigorously training in a, a full body squat, whether you use weight or not use weight. And I got, again, a lot of guys don't have weight right now because they don't have fucking gyms. They just shut all the gyms down again. Yeah. You know, so that's great. That's absolutely great. I mean, okay, so what other herbs though? Obviously you, you use ice on your nuts and you can talk about that and you've talked about that and you've got a lot of studies and stuff on that, but like what other herbs do you use? I mean, ashwagandha, is that one of them? Oh, I, I tend to lean towards a lot of the, um, there's a few that come from like the TCM, traditional Chinese sure. medicine. Sure. Um, there's one that's really heavily known as like a very strong kidney yang herb. So that from their perspective, that means like fortifying the, the adrenals. Sort yeah, of things. absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So there's one herb that actually Genghis Khan used quite a lot, um, known as cistanch. Um, and in in the rats, I mean, there's no human studies on this particular herb. It's a, it's a shame. Like, cause yeah, of course. In my opinion, I think it would outperform, say, like things like tribulus or forscolin or other natural um, test boosters. But yeah, from from the rat studies, like cistanch upregulated so many of these steroidogenic enzymes. It literally tripled sperm count. Um, doubled like sperm motility, sperm volume. Um, and it also, you know, powerfully supports DHT. And then again, I, we could go off on, on a tangent about. Yeah, DHT. no, no, but it's awesome though. I mean, I, I like talking about this. I don't talk about this very often with people, as you know, so it's cool that yeah. you and I are talking about this. Um, and, and, and again, you know, full disclosure, I've done a lot of research on, on um, adaptogens for testosterone boosting. And most of this stuff is, t you know, transient. Mike Maurer has a testosterone aggressive strength testosterone boosting supplement that he actually did do some um, clinical research on. They found that free testosterone was boosted again, transiently. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm a hundred percent in agreement with you that there is stuff in China in the Eastern uh, healing practices that is ancestral supplement based, right? It definitely addresses yeah. the systems, the bioregulatory systems of the body's endocrine system. So there's definitely a lot of, you know, merit merit there. It's just like you said, we don't have a lot of research, but I'm I'm all ears when it comes to you know listening to Chinese, and even Ayurvedic uh, modalities of healing because I know that they have used stuff. Like I actually, it's funny that you're talking about that. So like I have a healing mentor of mine who loves this supplement. I don't know if you've ever heard it about, I'll send it to you. It's called the sacred science company. I know the owner and it's called the ultimate adaptogenic elixir. And there's so much here it's in this, but she swears that this will restore a man's testosterone levels to optimal levels and that you'll get free testosterone up to 30 to 35 and you can get total testosterone over 800, 900, even in the sixties and seventies. 
So it's like, you know, I haven't really focused on using them because obviously I'm still using very low dose of therapeutic, you know, testosterone and I love it. And I, you know, I have no interest in changing and all those things, but if the world ends, bro, and I can't get therapeutic testosterone and we're foraging and, you know, we're all zombie apocalypse people, I'm probably going to be looking towards the ancient Chinese slash Ayurvedic slash adaptogenic stuff that you're recommending. So, yeah. um, you know, give us a couple of more things besides that that you think would be worth people looking into. Yeah. So, so obviously we have the, um, Sistanch. There's a few others like, um, one is actually, um, used, it's like a, it's traditionally known as the toothache plant. Um, cause it, you know, have you used he echinacea before? Yeah, of echinacea. course. Yeah. So like for immune, so, um, <clears throat> this one shares similar like constituents, the al alkylamides, which, that gives you that, you know, when you have echinacea, you get that burning sensation, that tingling. Sure. sure. Well, this particular compound has similar constituents huh. um, to echinacea, but in, in the rat studies, again, again, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting rat studies. Yeah, it's fine, dude. No, it's good. We have to, we have nothing else. Yeah, we have nothing else. But in the rat studies, it just massively um, increased like intromission frequency, like mounting frequency, um, sperm count, sperm motility. And also a lot of these herbs, man, they just mimic luteinizing hormone. Yeah. So yeah. They're, they're basically just mimic luteinizing hormone or they're acting on the hypothalamus to, to secrete more LH. Um, and then when dudes notice like a boost, let's say, you know, when guys jump on these test boosters, what they claim to feel, oh yeah, I really felt my test boost. Like, well, like I felt, did they really feel the test boost or did they feel the other did they feel the constituents acting on the brain to give them that feeling that alpha, the alpha, alpha male feeling, right? Um, because it's binding to the same receptors and occupying. And then when we do blood test analysis and we find out the test has only changed like 10 to 15%. Well, all right, but you're feeling good. You're feeling good most likely because the constituents are interacting with, you know, other receptors in the, in the body. It's not just, what the blood blood test shows, you know, it's like you need to factor in like how how a person feels, not just like objective data. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you can't. That that's everything, bro. I mean, you know, diagnosing a person's hormonal in deficiencies is a symptomatic diagnosis. It's not a blood lab measurement number by any stretch of the imagination. It's always how does a person feel. And again, that's an ancient healing technique. You know, who gives a fuck what your labs show? You know, do you have side effects or not? You know, it's the same thing with like guys getting preoccupied with their testosterone and their estrogen levels or their balance or their ratio or any of that nonsense. It's like, dude, it doesn't fucking matter. You know, the latest research now about testosterone and where does the estrogen go is whatever the man's therapeutic dosage is, when he feels good, his estrogen is going to rise to the level where it acclimates and stays where it needs to be and fucking with the estrogen by inhibiting it or blocking it like all these idiots do which is again 95 percent of the world exacerbates the problem as you know i mean estrogen is more profound and more important truthfully than testosterone is because the estrogen as a pleiotropic hormone is what provides the benefit and confer the protection to all of our biological systems so all these morons blocking their testosterone i mean their estrogen their testosterone from converting to estrogen are just killing themselves. They cause yeah. so many problems in the brain, so many bone mineral density issues. I mean, I could go on and on and on, right? I'm like a broken record, but if you're going to use therapeutic testosterone, you never inhibit your estrogen. If you're going to use natural adjuvants, like you're recommending, you never inhibit your estrogen. You know, all these idiots, you know, same shit. Like I haven't had a chance to talk about this. They talk about naturally blocking estrogen. It's retarded. You don't want to naturally block your estrogen. You never want to inhibit your estrogen. And they're also wrong, as you know, too, about high estrogen is what causes, um, you know, high body fat. It's none of those things. It's insulin resistance and inflammation. Yep. And people still don't get that. The average doctor still thinks that you want high testosterone and low estrogen. No. Yeah. You want optimized testosterone and you want estrogen to acclimatize or acclimatize to the level of the testosterone being optimal exactly Again, that's latest and greatest stuff you know i just did an awesome podcast with chris gathman and we talked about that you know and i'm getting a lot of physician reach out or a lot of in the physician community reaching out hey man can you do you have any studies to you know back that up and i'm like no but scott Powell does you know at tier one health and wellness i mean he's the guy the world's leading androgen researcher he does 
it's just, dude, it's mind blowing trying to get the clinical community to go back on misinformation that they've been literally prescribing for decades. And again, it all goes back to the bro world. The bodybuilders are the, you know, the real true biohackers. And they were just experimenting with this shit in the 90s and 2000s. And they started using AIs, women's breast cancer drugs, to inhibit testosterone. Because they, they're, they're, again, they're biohackers, bro. They use whatever. They fucking overdose, underdose. <laughs> Play, they're, playing, they're, they're ultimate guinea pigs. But, you know, we finally have gotten to the point in science now where we know what is right. It's just a matter of choosing that you're going to, you know, uphold that standard. It's, it goes back to the beginning of this podcast when you said people have to understand that the dosage matters. And until you do, you might fuck yourself up. But if you fuck yourself up, you should be good with it because you're experimenting in the name of science. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. But that's why, you know, people like me and you are cool. Like, like you said, you know, we're doing this in the name that we can help more people. Yeah. We might harm ourselves in the, in the purpose of, or, or in the proper, in the process of experimentation, but Hey, if we learn from it and we can actually prevent other people from fucking themselves up or hurting themselves, then that's the goal, right? Ultimately. Absolutely. Oh awesome. yeah. And I've, I've had a, you know, I've had many experiments go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Of know, course. And that's it's part of the process, man. Like it's part of the learning. Dude, I can't believe you're 24. I keep looking at you and like, you have such an ancient soul. I had no idea you were 24. I figured you were like in your early thirties, but that's awesome, dude. Um, do you have brothers or sisters that are into this, into the optimization world? Uh, my dad's a pharmacist. So, I mean, you know, I've always been immersed in health and nutrition just, but yeah, just, just from a soccer professional soccer back. That's why I really got into nootropics, man. was through like, um, experimenting with compounds to give me that edge on the soccer field. Um, and then, yeah, just, just fell in love. What with were you a striker center forward? I was actually center back center and center right, right back. As well. I figured you're one, you were center for sure. Um, that's awesome, man. What, how high did you play? Like what level did you stop playing? Well, I actually went overseas, uh, went to Budapest, Hungary, um, to represent Melbourne. So I was playing professionally, um, and just finished up cause, uh, like I tore my meniscus, which, BPC-157 actually healed. <laughs> That's so amazing. Yeah, I know, dude. Like, we're writing all sorts of stuff now. I, I, um, full disclosure, Ryan's like, you know, because Taylor May, he doesn't have as much work now. He's going to start writing articles for the site. And we're going to, like, really start going deep on, like, you know, putting some really scientific-based peptide articles out there. Because as you already know, there's not a lot. I mean, you know, we already wrote an article about BPC that's just amazing. It's, you know, page one. But there's just not enough information out there other than bro shit. So, yeah, bro, man, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Let me make this offer to you. Um, if you're okay with it. Um, and again, you don't might not be, but, um, I would love for you to write for the site, dude. Like yeah. if you want to come up with like a column, you know, that you do once a month or once every other month, depending on your workload. Um, you know, I, I'll publish your shit all day, dude. You, you can link back to your products, to your coaching. I mean, honestly, like, you know, a lot. And this is what I want to put out into the community right now. So it's like the stuff that we talked about today, obviously I want you to send me a recap, you know, with yeah. links. but if you want to create like a column and start publishing it on the site, you know, the site has about 30 to 35,000 unique visitors a month. So it's blowing up. Uh, and I've got like all my sites now are back tag. I killed everything I was doing to one. So it's all going to Jay Campbell now. So it's like, there's a lot of traffic. So. Yeah. I'm happy to promote you, dude, and, you know, let you sell your stuff, your coaching, and all that stuff that you do. But, um, you know, just think about it, you know. So don't say no yet. But oh, I, would love, I would, honestly, I would love for you to write a column. You know? I mean, I yeah. think you can kill it. You know, just whatever you want to come up with, like the latest and greatest on nootropics or, you know, small yeah. molecules or agents or whatever. But I would love for you to do that. Dude, I've already got a list. I've got an Excel list, like, literally in front of me with a shit ton of, like, research chemicals, articles, and things like that. So, man. I'd love to. I'd love oh, to. fuck, dude. That's awesome, man. Well, okay. So I'll send you an email and then I will connect you with my my copywriter in Canada, Tom Zakharov, who's brilliant. You know, so a lot of times you can just write what you want. Yeah. And just forward it on to him. And then he'll get back to me and say, hey, you know, Lucas's stuff is gold. I barely have to touch it. And if it's not, he'll just write you back and say, hey, dude, you're too smart for me. You got to give me some ideas. I'm like, what do you want me to accentuate and write about? Because he is pretty brilliant. He went to medical school dropped out. It's like, fuck it. I'm going to be a copywriter. So he knows, you know, he's like us, he knows all the different things, but he's only, he's actually a little older than you. He's like 27. Um, so you guys might be able to collaborate and do a lot of stuff. Yes. And if you need help in writing and stuff like that too, he's amazing. So 
Oh, man. Definitely. That's awesome, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I definitely offer that to you. So, bro, if people want to work with you, again, thank you for coming on the show. But if people want to work with you, they want to reach out to you, connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so they can just um, search Ergogenic Health, E-R-G-O-G-E-N-I-C, Health. Um, or they can just simply search me on Google, Lucas, A-O-U-N. Um, and definitely um, get them to check out my Instagram because that's where I share a lot of my research yep. on the on the Absolutely. Nutrition. And your IG is just Ergogenic Health on Instagram, right? So Instagram.com, yep. Ergogenic, uh, underscore, uh, underscore health. health, right? Yeah. Beautiful, man. Dude, I really appreciate you coming on. Epic. Like I said, man, you owe me an amazing email with like, these are my three prop, top nootropics. You know, this is the neurotransmitter. I didn't get a chance to talk to you about 1P. Are you familiar with 1P? Have you used 1P? 1P? Yeah, so 1P is like an analog of um, LSD. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. yeah, so Nick, so Nick, Nick has <laughs> the ability to get that. And so my wife and I have actually done that now three times. And bro, that's fucking next up. Really? I didn't think I was ever going to be like, nothing is going to be cameo. That shit's next level. Like that's the stuff you do in the morning to like massively increase just well-being and focus. Like I honestly do like I'm a quantum computer on that shit, you know, and there's no come down from it, you know, and if you're not like a super brainiac dorky nerd like me and you, you just are happy, you know, total dropped inhibitions. I mean, you're in love frequency. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I remember when Nick was telling me about it like nine months ago and I was like, whatever, bro. You know, he's so smart. He's always telling me about these things. And he's like, I'm going to give you and your wife and you guys are going to use it one day and you're going to get back to me and you're going to be like, whoa. And I'm like, whatever, dude. And then he was yeah. right. But anyway, we'll talk more about it when the podcast is over um, and I can get, you know, get more information. There's nothing online about it. Nothing. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you got to be like a guy like you or a guy like him to like figure the shit out and stuff like that. He has one yeah. guy that can get it. But it's pretty amazing stuff. And it's funny that I'm talking about it on this podcast because after, after it runs, people are going to be like, bro, how do I get that? And I'm like, you can't. You're not, <laughs> You're not Lucas Allen. You're not Nick Andrews. You can't. It's not available. But that's awesome, dude. Well, listen, man, again, you guys, for all of you guys, please support the amazing people that come on the podcast. Check out Lucas's IG. It's ergogenic health underscore. Um, I'm sorry, ergogenic underscore health. And then his website is, of course, ergogenichealth.com.au for Aussie, Australia. I can't even, I can't even make, I can't be a mate, mate. So, dude, honestly, honor for me to have you on the show today. It's been a while that we finally got this together, and I appreciate you yeah. coming on. So, thank you. Remember, guys, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very, very soon.